Thank you for watching the first video that showed how to use the Task Scheduler Library to blink the Arduino onboard LED using a scheduled task to turn it on and another to turn it off. In this video, I'll demonstrate a second method to blink the LED using the Task Scheduler and at the same time introduce how we can modify scheduled tasks at runtime. We'll also look at how to blink two LEDs with separate durations and periods. This second method dispatches a task which will both turn the LED on and schedule a second task to turn it off. The task that turns the LED off then reschedules the one to turn it back on. The distinction from our first method is that the dispatcher is only dispatching each task once, not periodically. Our code has to tell it when to dispatch the next task. Either the method in the previous video or this one may seem more natural to you. Both yield the same result. I've removed our previous task definitions and replaced them with these two. The first defines a task to be dispatched immediately and only once. The second defines a task to never be dispatched. In effect, it's a placeholder task. The all caps constants used here are defined in the library. The turn on LED task will turn the LED on and then specify the time to dispatch the turn off task by altering its next dispatch time from never to duration, which is the length of time for the LED to be on. The turn off task will turn the LED off and to keep things going, reschedule the turn on task to period minus duration in the future. This is because period minus duration is the off time, in this case 2 seconds or 3000 minus 1000 milliseconds. Notice that the period of each task is one shot, so it's only going to be dispatched once when its time is due. Our code has to reschedule them for them to run again and to continue the blinking. In order to modify a scheduled task, we must call a member function on the scheduled task object. We refer to the object, off task, and call the member function set next with a parameter specifying when to next dispatch the task. Notice this period. In the next video, I'll present the other member functions. To really understand the value of the task scheduler, let's again consider how we might blink two LEDs simultaneously with independent durations and periods. This would be challenging at best using the traditional method we first looked at, but it's easy using the task scheduler library. Let's look at a modified sketch to see just how easy it is to support a second LED. We'll start by making our sketch a bit more general by having the LED functions take a parameter or argument, namely the LED pin number. Instead of using sched task to define our scheduled tasks, we'll use sched task t from the library so that the dispatcher can pass the LED pin number to the dispatch tasks. For each LED, we define two scheduled tasks, one to turn the LED on and one to turn it off. I've arbitrarily delayed the start of the LED1 tasks by 10 milliseconds and the start of the LED2 tasks by 50 milliseconds just to show you how that can be done. Remember that we want to demonstrate the capability of independently blinking the LEDs, so we have used different durations and periods for each, which are defined in the example constants header file. Notice that sched task T is similar to sched task that we used earlier. With sched task T, we need to specify the type of the parameter we want the dispatcher to pass, in this case an integer, and we need to include a fourth parameter for the constructor, in this case the LED pin number. And of course notice that we are including the sched task T header file. If needed, both sched task.h and sched task T.h can be included. In other words, you can mix both kinds of scheduled tasks in the same sketch. So that's it. With just a few lines of code, we've expanded our example to support a second LED. Before continuing, I want to give you some guidelines for using the task scheduler. First, remember that scheduled tasks do not return to any user code, such as some function that scheduled them. In effect, they do their thing and terminate. Scheduled tasks must not tie up the processor, such that the dispatcher cannot dispatch another task that is due. This means no long computations and no use of the delay function in a scheduled task. 
By long computations, I mean a time that is long relative to the interval between required dispatches of any tasks in the sketch. Only the dispatcher should run in loop. You may need to make exceptions, but if you do, make sure any such code runs quickly. For maximum flexibility, scheduled tasks may schedule other tasks, including themselves. They can also modify any schedules, including their own. By modify, I mean alter the next dispatch time, the period, and or the function to be dispatched. In the case of sched task t, the argument may also be changed on the fly, but not the type of that argument. I hope you're finding these tutorial videos useful. If you care to make a small donation using your PayPal account, I'd really appreciate it. See the notes below. In the next video, I'll show you various methods of scheduling and modifying tasks and how to implement a delay between scheduled tasks.